We're now going to talk about double integrals over more general regions. So we've seen how to calculate double integrals of a function over a rectangle, and now we want to consider more general regions. So we first have to define what integration means for more general regions. So let d be a closed and bounded region in R2. And let f be a function on d. So we want to define the double integral over d of f dA to be intuitively the volume under the graph and over d, which is only literally going to be true when f is positive. Otherwise, you'll have some volumes with signs. Um, so the picture is um, here are the axes. Here's the region D on which our function is defined. Then we look at the graph over this region, and we look at the volume of this region in between D and the graph. It has a sort of vertical wall on the outside. Okay, so to define this, we can reduce to the um, definition we made before as follows. So we let R be a rectangle containing D. And such a rectangle exists because I assumed that the function, that the um, domain is bounded. So here's a rectangle R containing D. And we define a function capital F on the rectangle R to the real numbers. So this is a regular R, that's the rectangle R, and this is a blackboard bold R, that's the set of real numbers. The definition of the function capital F is that capital F of xy is equal to lowercase f of xy if the point xy is in the region D for which f is defined, and it's zero if xy is not in the region D. And finally, we can define the double integral over D of f dA to be the double integral over R of capital F dA. Um, and you can prove that this is going to be well-defined, at least when lowercase f is continuous. And the basic example is that the double integral over d of 1 dA, can you guess what this is going to be? Well, we're integrating 1 over the element of area, and this is just going to give us the area of d. And if you think about the definition, what's the double integral of d over 1 dA? Well, to define it, you, you cut the rectangle R up into a bunch of sub-rectangles. I won't draw them all. But anyway, you divide this up into sub-rectangles. And over each sub-rectangle, you take the area of the sub-rectangle times the value of the function over that sub-rectangle. Now, when the function is 1, well, well, so this is lowercase f. So if lowercase f is 1, then uppercase f is 1 when you're in the domain and 0 when you're not in the domain. So what you're doing is you're cutting up the region r into a bunch of tiny rectangles, and you're summing up the areas of those rectangles that are in the domain d, and that just gives you the area of the domain d. I mean, it's only going to be an approximation because there will be some error for those rectangles to touch the boundary, but in the limit as the rectangles go to zero, then you converge to the area of d. Okay, so that's the definition, and how do we compute this thing? So um, it depends on the region d. So the simplest kind of region d is what we'll call a type 1 region. 
So this is, this is a terminology used by Stewart's calculus book, um, and we'll use it also, but it's just sort of a crutch to help you learn. And so outside of this course, if you say type one region, probably no, nobody's gonna know what you're talking about. Anyway, the type one region looks like this. So this is the region in the XY plane. So it has four boundary edges, so to speak. So the, the first one is the graph of a function y equals g1 of x. And the second is the graph of some other function y equals g2 of x. And then the left boundary is the line where x equals a. So here's the point a on the x-axis. And the right boundary is the line where x equals b. So here's the point b on the x-axis. So in set theory notation, the region D is the set of x and y such that x is between a and b and y is between g1 of x and g2 of x. So that's a type 1 region. And we can integrate over a type 1 region as follows. So the idea is we cut the region into thin vertical strips, and we integrate or, or we approximate the um, integral over each vertical strip, and then we add them up and take the limit as the widths of the strips goes to zero. So this is what we did to integrate over a rectangle. And here we get a similar formula with a slight difference. So what, what you get from this is that the double integral over d of f dA is the integral as x goes from a to b. And now y, well, so in rec the rectangular case, the limits of the integral over y were simply the lower and upper um, y values of the rectangle. But here, the lower and upper limits depend on x. So y goes from g1 of x to g2 of x. Then you have f dy dx. Okay, so what this integral is for a given x, right? So this is the inner integral, the integral over y. So x is like a constant here. So these limits of integration are actually acting like constants. And what this integral over y represents is it's the integral of f over one of these vertical lines that starts from the lower boundary of the region and goes to the upper boundary of the region. Okay, so to evaluate this, you, um, in the inner integral, you treat x as a constant and integrate just as before, and then you take the result, which is now going to be some function which depends on x because f is going to depend on x, and also the limits of integration depend on x. And then you take this resulting function of x and integrate it over y. Excuse me, it's integrated over x. Okay. Um, and there's a analogous thing which we'll call a type 2 region. So a type 2 region is where now the left boundary is no longer a straight line, and the right boundary is no longer a straight line, but the lower and upper boundaries are straight lines. Okay, So the lower boundaries say y equals to c, and the upper boundaries say y equals d. And the left boundary is a curve of the form x equals h1 of y. So here x is a function of y. You can imagine just turn your head 90 degrees to see um, x as a function of y. And here x is some other function, h2 of y. And in set theory notation, d is the set of points x, y, such that x goes between h1 of y and h2 of y. Uh, 
and y goes between c and d. And to evaluate a double integral over a region like this, well, we now cut it into horizontal strips, and, and so on. And so that corresponds to integrating over x first. So the double integral over d of f dA is the integral as y goes from c to d, and now the x limits depend on y. So the x limits are h1 of y and h2 of y. And now we have f dx dy. Okay, now notice that if we wanted to integrate over y first with a region like this, it wouldn't work as well. Because if I take a, a vertical strip, then it's going to, um, well, the part of this vertical strip that's in the region is going to have multiple pieces. So you, you could still do this, but then the, the um, y integral would have to be split into several parts, so it would just be a little more complicated. So if you want the inner integral to just be a single integral, then it's not going to work if you integrate over y first, but it will work if you integrate over x first. Um, now, if a region is both type 1 and type 2, that sometimes happens, then you can integrate in either order. So you can use either the formula here or the formula on the previous page for type 1 regions to evaluate the integral. Although you need to be careful because the limits of integration will be different. So if you want to switch from a type 1 integral to a type 2 integral or vice versa, you have to change the limits of integration carefully. So we'll see some examples of this in the next lecture segment.